while looking for ideas for my next experiment i stumbled upon this website with an insane 3d experience the way you could rotate it with the mouse zoom in and out and interact with it made it feel super immersive so i knew i had to recreate this effect but instead of just using javascript like i usually do i thought it was the perfect time to bring nextjs into the mix i have covered bunch of 3js projects on this channel already but i often get comments asking for more nextjs implementations so here we go In today's video, we are going to build this 3D interactive image gallery using Next.js 15 and 3JS. We'll also integrate orbit controls to make it fully interactive. If you find my work helpful, make sure to drop a like. It really helps more people discover my content. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to for more Next.js creative projects. Also, if you'd like to access the source code, you can check out the pro membership. The link is in the description. All right, let's get started. Just to save some time, I already have a fresh Next.js project set up and running on my local server. Now let's clean up some of the default boilerplate so we can start fresh. First, I'll open the globals.css file and remove everything since we'll be writing our own styles from scratch. Next, I'll go to the page.module.css file and clear out all the styles there as well. Then, I'll open page.jsx file, remove everything and just leave an empty div with the class name app. Now before we move forward I'll install 3JS Once that's installed I'll close the terminal and add the assets Inside the public directory I'll create a folder called assets and drop in all the images we'll be using for this experience I've got 30 images but you can add as many as you want All right now that everything is set up let's add some basic html to make sure the page doesn't look completely empty For now, I'll just add a simple nav and footer with some placeholder text. Again, this is just to make sure the page look a bit more like the original design. Now let's move on to styling. First, I'll reset the default margins and paddings and set box sizing to border box to ensure consistent spacing across all elements. Next, I'll style the nav and footer. Both will be fixed to the top and bottom of the page, spanning the full width. I'll use flexbox to center the content inside them and add some padding to give them a bit of spacing. Now for the typography, the heading inside the nav will be set to uppercase using a custom font with a bold font weight. For the footer text, I'll use a monospace font, make it uppercase, and give it a smaller font size with a slightly faded color. And that's it. Now let's create a component for our 3D sphere. Inside the app directory, I'll create a new folder called components. Then, inside this components folder, I'll create a file called orb.jsx. For now, I'll just export a simple function that returns an empty div with the class name orb. To display it on the page, I'll go back to the page component, which is our home page, import the orb component we created and place it inside the return statement. This won't do anything yet, but it sets up the structure so we can start working on the 3JS scene next. Since we are working with a client side library like 3JS, the first thing we need to do is to add the use client directive at the top. This ensures that our component runs only in the browser. Next, I'll import the use effect and use ref hooks from React as well as 3JS and the orbit controls extension. We need use ref because we'll be directly manipulating a DOM element, the container where we'll initialize our 3JS scene. Inside the component, I'll create a ref called our ref using the use ref hook. This will store a reference to the div where we'll mount our WebGL renderer. I'll also attach the ref to our div. This is important because later we'll use this div as the canvas container for rendering our 3D scene. Next, we'll set up use effect to initialize our 3JS scene. To keep things flexible, I'll pass some configurable properties as props to our component. Total images sets how many different images we can randomly pick from. Total items control how many images will be placed on the sphere. Base width and base height define the default size of each image plane. Sphere radius adjusts how big or small the sphere is. Background color lets us set the background color of the scene. Inside the component, I'll define these props with default values, so if we don't pass anything, it still works as expected. Next, 
I'll set up the use effect hook and since we want our scene to update when certain properties change, I'll pass them as dependencies. I'll include total images, total items, base width, base height, sphere radius and background color in the dependency array. This means that if any of these values change, the scene will reinitialize with the new settings. Now let's start setting up our 3JS scene inside the use effect. The first thing we need is a scene. The scene acts as a container that holds everything in our 3D world, objects, lights and the camera. Next, I'll set up the camera. I'm using perspective camera which mimics how our eyes perceive depth. The first parameter is the field of view set to 75 degrees which controls how wide the camera's view is. The second parameter is the aspect ratio which is set to match the screen's width and height to prevent distortion. The last two parameters define the near and far clipping planes. This determines how close or far objects can be before they stop rendering. I've set them to 0.1 and 1000, meaning objects too close or too far won't be visible. Now I'll create the renderer which is responsible for drawing everything on the screen. I'm enabling anti-aliasing to smooth out edges and alpha transparency so the background remains visible. Preserve drawing buffer is set to true which can be useful for capturing screenshots without clearing the frame buffer. I'll also set power preference to high performance to optimize rendering speed. Next, I'll configure the renderer settings. I'll set the renderer size to match the screen width and height. This ensures the scene covers the entire viewport. Next, I'll apply the background color by converting it from a hex string to a number using parse int function. This will set the background color of our scene. The pixel ratio is set to match the device's pixel density, ensuring a sharper display on high resolution screens. Finally, I'm enabling linear encoding and adjusting the gamma factor to 2.2 to ensure proper color rendering and contrast. With everything set up, I'll now attach the renderer to the div so it renders inside the correct container. At this point, we have a fully initialized scene, camera and renderer but nothing is visible yet. Next, we'll add orbit controls to make the scene interactive. First, I'll initialize orbit controls which will allow us to rotate, zoom and explore the sphere using the mouse. I'll pass in the camera and the renderer's DOM element so the controls know which scene to interact with. To make the movement feel smoother, I'll enable damping and set a damping factor to 0.05. This creates a more natural easing effect when rotating the sphere. I'll also adjust the rotation speed, set zoom limits using min distance and max distance and disable panning so the user can't move the scene off center. With orbit controls in place, we can now freely move around the scene. Next, I'll create a texture loader to load the images that will be mapped onto our sphere. Since we need multiple images, I'll define a function called getRandomImagePath which randomly picks an image from the assets folder. Now let's define how each image plane will be created. I'll write a function called createImagePlane that receives a texture and returns a properly sized plane geometry. Since images can have different aspect ratios, I'll calculate the width and height dynamically. If the image is wider than it is tall, I'll adjust the height to maintain its original proportions. If the image is taller than it is wide, I'll adjust the width instead. This ensures that all images look properly scaled when mapped onto the sphere. Now, I'll define load image mesh function which loads an image texture and places it on the sphere. Once an image is loaded, I'll create a plane geometry using our create image plane function and apply the texture using a basic material. I'll set some texture properties to ensure the image is displayed correctly. Map maps are disabled for performance. The filtering mode is set to linear filter which smooths out textures. Depth testing and depth writing are enabled so the images render correctly. Encoding is set to linear encoding to maintain accurate colors. Now that we have the image as a mesh, I'll position it correctly on the sphere. Using spherical coordinates, I'll set its x, y and z positions so that the images are evenly distributed across the surface. To make sure each image faces outward, I'll use look at method which rotates the image so it always faces the center of the sphere.
Finally, I'll add the image mesh to the scene. Each time an image is added to the sphere, I'll increase the loaded count variable. Once all images are loaded, I'll start the animation loop to render everything. At this point, we now have images dynamically loading onto our 3D sphere. I'll create a function called create sphere, which will distribute all the image planes evenly in a spherical shape. To do this, I loop through total items, which represents the number of images that will be placed on the sphere. For each image, I'll calculate two important values, phi, which determines the vertical position of the image, theta, which controls the horizontal placement around the sphere. These values ensure that the images are spaced evenly, covering the entire sphere without clustering in one area. Once calculated, I'll call load image mesh function, which will create and position the image on the sphere based on these values. With this, all images will now be placed correctly, forming a 3D sphere of images. Now that the sphere is set up, I need to position the camera correctly so that it frames the entire scene. I'll move the camera slightly back by setting its Z position to 10. Next, I'll define the animate function, which keeps the scene running smoothly. This function continuously updates the orbit controls and re-renders the scene on each frame. I'll use request animation frame for animate function, which tells the browser to run this function in sync with the screen's refresh rate. This makes sure everything updates efficiently, keeping the motion fluid. To make sure the sphere always fits correctly in the viewport, I'll add an event listener to handle window resizing. Whenever the window size changes, I'll update the renders width and height, adjust the camera's aspect ratio, and call update projection matrix method to apply the changes. This prevents the sphere from getting stretched or distorted when resizing the window. Finally, I'll call create sphere function to generate the image sphere. Then, I'll return a cleanup function to remove the renderer from the DOM when the component unmounts. At this point, our 3D image sphere is fully set up and interactive. We can test it out and see how it looks in the browser. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.